Miles the DJ here backstage at uh, Myth. Twin Cities, good times to be had on a Saturday here, uh, joined by one of my, really, uh, one of my favorite bands of the last couple years, Churches from Glasgow, Scotland. How are you? Hi. Welcome we're, to the Twin we're Cities. Good, I think, yes, thank you for having us back. We're excited. We, before we were filming, we were talking about uh, First Avenue and how much we love that venue, and you're one show away from getting a star. Yes, apparently, apparently so. Um, I wasn't in this conversation, so you probably know better. Um, well, that's what they told us. They said if we sold it out three times on the first album, and then we were like, obviously, we can have a star now. And they said, you do it one more time, then you get a star. So, so you I'm must. Coming, I'm coming back here just for that. You must come back. Maybe in the spring, we'll make it happen. Well, that and the fact that it's a great venue. I mean, it's just iconic. It's a great room. The vibe in there is amazing. Well, that's, why we, that's why we care about getting a star. It's one of the best right. venues right. in the world. You know? it's yeah, I know. It's up there. It's, a, it's one, of my, one of the best things about living in Minneapolis, I think, is seeing shows there. Mm. And at Myth. Let's not, let's not sleep on Myth, though. It's, it's fantastic here, it's too. Cool. It's cool. So, we don't know yet. We'll find out tonight. Yeah, yeah. As we record this, we're, uh, you're playing a show tonight at Myth in, uh, in Maplewood. Um, the new record, um, Every Open Eye, is fantastic. And it's... I'm wondering about the process going into making a sophomore record because with the first one being so, so successful, you selling out shows at First Avenue on the first one, um, going into that second record, what was the mentality like going into it and how do you feel about the, uh, the result? It's kind of like your bends, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, if that's the case, then our third record's gonna be a masterpiece. Like, is that, right. uh, but, yeah, you know, we were we were in a really, really positive frame of mind coming in to record this. We didn't really have any of that mad sophomore anxiety that everyone seems to talk about. You know, pressure, pressure, pressure. But n that never fed into the studio in any way with us. We were we had just been touring for so long. We were so ready to get back to Glasgow first and foremost. Get back to kind of more r re the real world, if you want. And uh, by the time we got into the studio, the whole record just kind of it's like we tipped it out of a bucket. <laughs> you know, it was, it felt really good. It seems like I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm not in the band. I wish I was. But um, it, it seems like the, the process was pretty quick, right? I mean, you were on tour a year ago. Uh, already uh, a new record. Is that maybe part of it? Just that it happened so quickly and we're kind of in the same cycle in a sense? Yeah, I think that's part of the, the rhythm of it, really. I mean, it's kind of unnatural if you think about it, if you're like a kind of studio based project, which we were initially to then suddenly down tools and you know from doing what we what we do basically and, and then go and play and play and play for for two years solid but um yeah but by the time we got back we, like martin said we were so ready to go there was so much positive energy about going back into the studio that um yeah we just we, we didn't really we didn't really have that sort of panic talking about being a, a studio band initially but after playing so many shows now um i, I don't know probably hundreds of shows at this point now how are you guys feeling on stage on this record versus the last one? Any differences? I think we're a lot more comfortable with the live show now. I think we learned a lot about what we want a church's live show to be over the course of all that touring. But I'm glad we gave ourselves the time to figure it out ourselves rather than someone else coming in and being like, so this is what you should do and you go here and do this and like that's how you should perform. Because that doesn't feel genuine to me. But I feel at this point we have a lot more of a self-assured live show um, in terms of the visuals and in terms of what we're all doing and it's really nice to be able to like curate a set list now rather than having to just play every single song we have and then leave yeah but yeah it's been going really well so far response has been really good were you getting a lot of that before on the last record people telling you how to perform or i was just thinking that it was funny that you should even bring that up because no one would ever have a chance to tell us what to do <laughs> in any way no i just mean that you know like a lot of people have a lot of opinions about things but luckily we don't work with people that would tell us what to do but i guess you know for a new band and we did start playing bigger and bigger venues like we just kind of had to give ourselves time to figure it out and find our feet and see how we wanted to do it i think yeah no, i'm excited to see what you guys are going to be up to tonight um the record is fantastic, as I've said. Your birthday just passed, right? It did, yes. How was that, being on the road on a birthday? It was much like many birthdays on the road. Yeah. But uh, no, it was good. Um, a lot of the fans were really nice and sent us things and uh, chatted chat to us online. So it was nice. It was as homely as a tour birthday can be, I think. I was listening to an interview that you did about a year ago going into your birthday and you were going to be, uh, I think, at Disney World in Orlando we we last went year. To, we went to Universal Studios on an off day. Um, no, it was on a gig day. Yeah, we went there in the daytime. We played in Orlando at nighttime. So what was that? It was good. Um, I hadn't been to Universal Studios since I was teeny tiny. So, um, yeah, it was really it was good. 
Yeah, it was good. I'm not really one for the roller coasters, but I gave it a good square go. I think the last time I saw you guys was uh, I was living in Los Angeles and you were playing the Tower. I think we is did. What we it did. Was. The Tower Theater was where we did that Nerdist interview. Actually. And I, I so believe that was fantastic. I love that show, and I think that's where they filmed some of Mulholland Drive. Yeah, I think so. That's what we heard, and we had to do some interviews in the downstairs part of the building. It's deeply creepy. Are you a David Lynch fan? Is that a thing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the interior of Silencio is like that's the Tower Theater. We were very excited about that show. Yeah, I mean, we don't have many shows there. I, I don't know if they started, but when when we played there, they, there wasn't much. It was once in a blue moon you would see someone playing there. It was really cool. Yeah, you're the first band I had heard of that really played it, so that was uh, that was a cool yeah. experience. I remember um, vividly that like most of our equipment was actually outside because they couldn't fit it in the building, so they had it out in the parking lot covered with like tarpaulin in case the rain came. On. When you're on the when you're on the tour bus, what do you guys like to take in? Is it TV shows, is it movies, music? How do you how do you kind of spend your time on the bus? I guess a lot of the time when we're on the bus, we're sleeping because you drive overnight to places, so. Um, yeah, I always like to kind of, you know, try and watch the end of a TV show or a podcast or something before you go to bed because I guess when the days are so crammed with promo and signings and sound check and stuff, you don't really do anything that isn't band related. But I think I've kind of learned over the course of touring to try and get like, you know, even like 15 minutes, half an hour of something different for your brain um, just so you're doing something else. And sometimes we do communal movies, sometimes. Um, but yeah, we haven't done that yet, so we'll need to choose one for this tour and then start. When you have those times to relax and just sort of, you know, keep to yourself, with all the success you're having and, you know, the interviews and the press that you're talking about, do you get a chance to reflect on how successful you guys have become in such a short period of time? I mean, it's a pretty amazing achievement to be able to get to this level that you're at. I think we're really, we're really happy with where we are and we're really grateful, but I guess we're kind of focusing on the work of, of it, you know, rather than sitting thinking about, oh, isn't that nice? I guess, we, you know, we're touring, we're playing shows, we're just working on it in that way and I guess we don't get a lot of downtime, so I kind of prefer to use the downtime to switch my brain off and do something healthy rather than think about like, wow, you know? But I it's, it's think it's important to take a step back and be aware and be grateful, but um, I think if you think all about it all the time, you'll just go nuts. We've talked about First Ave and how you've played there before. Um, any other experiences or memories of Minneapolis that you remember in the past? I mean, we're in the home of Prince right mm. now, so. We've still never met him yet. I'd really love to meet Prince. I'd love like, to do that. Apparently there's like a kind of roped off bit in First Avenue that's always kind of his designated spot and he can just walk in any time, like if there's a band on. I don't know if that's legend or if that's actually true, but. Um, we were hoping that maybe he would come down and see us, but I don't think he did. I think that's true of every venue in Minneapolis for the most part. I think uh, there's a roped off section. There was a show at Varsity Theater a couple nights ago. Uh, Leanne Lahavis was playing, and I'm sure, I, I know he was there. He was tweeting about it. He was definitely there. I, don't, I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but there was definitely a roped off section, people in hoodies, like in disguise. So I had this weird suspicion. Maybe he'll show up tonight. Who knows? Maybe. You covered I, one I of his songs know. once, right? Um, yeah, we did it for like a radio session. Like most of the time, UK radio stations want you to do a cover version as well as your own stuff. Um, but we haven't really played it live recently, so I guess we have we have our own tunes now. So we don't need to play. You're in covers. Minneapolis tonight. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Well, we retired it at First Ave. That was the last place oh, we played already, it. So you've already done it. So I think it seems like a a good place to draw the line. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I mean, you guys, you guys got this down. This whole music thing. <laughs> well, yeah, gigs. We know how to play gigs. Thanks for rolling through. You do. You're very good at it as well. Um, thanks for rolling through Minneapolis. Hopefully we'll see you again, maybe in the spring, yeah, summer. I hope let's so. do First Avenue again. Any First Avenue people watching, book them and let's get them a star. That'd be fun. Uh, the new record's amazing. Thanks for the time. Uh, no, churches. Thank you guys for coming. Backstage at Myth.